What is going on guys and welcome to the channel. We're back on the EV truck again. What are we doing on this episode, Donnie? Well, we gotta put the old cooler in. We gotta put the old cooler in. What we're doing is we're putting a radiator in the back. But Michimoto is a partner for this truck and we have two full-sized C10 radiators. So this is actually the factory replacement radiator if you had a square body. What Donnie's doing right now is cutting some angle iron so we can get some way of getting this thing to stay in position while we make some tabs for it. Donnie cut up some brackets on the plasma table and we just have to wait for some bungs to come in the mail. But before we do that, this radiator has to come up about six inches. We're gonna lift this thing up and then weld our angle iron on. Then Donnie's gonna be able to take his brackets. These are gonna go underneath with some bungs welded to that. That way this old girl can't come flopping out when we're pulling 75 Gs off the line. Let's cut up some material so we can get our radiator in position. So now we got the radiator in place, it's time to make some brackets. I measured where the bottom of the cage is gonna be. I cut this one inch tube, I notched it, I'm gonna polish it up. And from there I'm gonna make a nice bracket in the bottom. I'll weld it onto this. This will hold the bottom, it'll hold the weight up. Now I have to bend this and not break it. I think that looks pretty slick to be honest with you. So now I'll just make it in. I gotta go ahead and clean everything up and then take it. And then I'm gonna work on the brackets for the outside of the radiator. I'm just gonna come off the roll cage, make something intricate, nice, pretty design. I just kind of designed it so these bungs go on top and then from there the radiator will sit on top and I'll weld these to the radiator. So there should be plenty of support for what we're trying to do. Brackets are all tacked in. I'm getting to the point now where at the back of the cage, I have to start finishing it up. I wanna get these back braces down on the bottom of this pillar that goes straight back to the hoop. So that will triangulate the back of the bed and stiffen this whole thing up. So how you like working at S2S so far? It's, uh, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie, what are you having them do? Look at that. It up just like that. Let's show the people how we're how we're getting this done right now. Look at that. You gotta lean in. Teamwork for the dream work. I am stoked this is in. Timmy's working on the front, getting the front radiator in. A lot of people think electric cars don't need radiators because there's no grills in the front of them. Electric cars generate a ton of heat. We have these. Pretty cool little heat exchangers. Each one of these is gonna be for one of our large drive units. Now, the larger Mishimoto radiators is gonna be for the battery pack. As far as your range goes, your performance, all that stuff is all going to dictate by how efficient the battery pack cools. So we're gonna go completely overkill on this system because we wanna really beat the living daylights out of this thing and not have to worry about the batteries overheating and then the truck going into limp mode. We're gonna put the larger radiator in the front in the traditional spot you'd see in a C10. And then up top here, we're gonna actually hang our two heat exchangers for the motors. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the radiators in first, get those to fit, see how they're doing. And then I gotta do a bunch of sheet metal work to smooth this core support out. So we got our core support nice and smoothed out. What I have to do now is I'm gonna fit the Mishimoto radiator in. Donnie went ahead and pulled it out of the back. We have another one coming in the mail. Everything's kind of clearance and ready to go, but I feel like it's gonna be a lot easier if I just pull this core support off and just fit the radiator on the workbench. We got our radiator situated in our core support. I'm pretty happy with the depth. Got it nice and level there. As you can see, we have some holes that we're gonna have to fill, so. I'm gonna go ahead and take the radiator out first. I'm gonna get rid of this filler neck because we don't need this anymore. Oh, Donnie! Oh. We wanna do a nice frame around this and come up here around the whole perimeter. Instead of me wasting a bunch of time trying to cut all this by hand, I'm gonna have Donnie boy draw it up on the old computer. Ooh, that's a nice shirt, where'd you get that? Oh, well, Salvage your Savage, get your merch. Yeah, head nice over to salvagesavage.com. Salvage nice. Savage. I like the pistons, they're nice. Shameless plug. Donnie, you done yet? I'm really getting behind the eight ball here, buddy. Oh yeah. That one. Oh. Looks nice. I'm gonna go and put the core support in so that we can start hanging our heat exchangers for the motors. So now we're moving on to our heat exchangers for the motors. Now we're gonna use these nice Mishimoto units. So we're gonna run two of these, one for the front motor and one for the rear motor. 
I'm going to utilize this one by one steel tubing to be able to make some brackets to hold these guys up. I still have to make a rear bracket here. The radiator did not end up getting mounted in the front because we need to use it for the back. So for the front, we still have a big hole there. I took some measurements. The radiator is only three inches. So it's pretty much flush with this, which will give us plenty of room to make our fittings come out of our heat exchangers to be able to have some nice clearance. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start making our closeout panel. It's gonna go across this whole thing and then make some nice openings so we can show off our nice radiators. driver's side now is going to go kind of like that and you can already kind of see it taking shape as you can see this thing is not flat at all but thankfully with 16 gauge metal i'm going to be able to click code this corner right here and then kind of push this down over here and click code down this edge and just kind of get it all to put in place in this shape where this thing kind of dives down so I'm gonna go ahead and weld this inner flange in first so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut that on the plasma table and then bend this shape what we're gonna do is we're using this piece of roll cage tubing as a die and this 16 gauge steel is actually fairly malleable I'm gonna start with my strapping at the halfway point I'm gonna mark where that bend starts and that's where I'm going to wrap it around this pipe and make a 90. And I'm gonna continue that process and work my way around using this profile. Once I stick it down inside of that hole, then I'll push against all four corners and then I'll mark my line where I'm gonna cut it. Once I cut it, I'll tack weld it. All right, so we got our front panels almost dialed in, guys. This driver's side is all welded up. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this gap. Jeff came in and did some plasma cutting for me. The cool thing about having a plasma cutter is you're able to not only cut like rudimentary shapes, squares, triangles, but you can do logos. And as you can see, got a really cool S, got a really cool A, and you can kind of put it together and see exactly what we might have when we're done. So I'm going to start with this shield, get this thing cleaned up, and I'm probably going to place it right in the center of the closeout panel here. Going to create a really nice finishing touch. We finally got this panel all cut out. I'm pretty happy with it. It's gonna be a nice little centerpiece for the placard that we're making. So this guy's gonna go right in her here like this. There we go. Like that. Yeah, I'm liking that a lot. And I think what we'll do is mesh on her here so that it's not so much of an eyesore looking through and seeing pretty much just the ground. I think the mesh will have a nice look. It'll tie in the Mishimoto coolers and just really finish out the front of this cowl. So now we're gonna go ahead and put rib nuts in for our closeout panels on our EVC-10. And what a rib nut tool is, guys, it's pretty much like a pop rivet, but it gives you a thread. Thread this on, you drill your holes to your proper size, and then you go ahead and stick this inside the hole. Squeeze really hard. Johnny, use those big old muscles, buddy. Yeah, Yeah, you see how it flared right there? So that flare squishes down on the sheet metal, and then you get a nice threaded nut cert on your sheet metal. So we're gonna go ahead and do this on all of our like 27,000 holes we have on our course port to get that thing bolted in.
So our closeout panel is a wrap. Coolant system is pretty much where we need it. And I'm really pumped about how this badge came out. As you can see, I got a little excited, put the hinges on. It, they could just kind of like bolt on factory guys. I know, don't be mad at me. I'm sorry I didn't film it. I just got way too excited to see the hood on the truck. But the front end's looking really good. The only thing we're waiting on now is that Mishimoto radiator. But once it comes in, then we get to start doing some plumbing. So the front main radiator, as I said before, is for the left battery pack and the rear radiator is for the right battery pack. We have a couple more things we have to do before we hand this thing off to Andrew and he starts plumbing this up with our Vibrant Performance AN fittings and lines. But until then, next time guys, we're gonna be do finishing up the coolant system with our front radiator setup. And like I said before, running all of our plumbing. So thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you later.